What's up guys, this is Vanalik Puma, back with another Borderlands video, and I noticed some of you guys have been requesting this on my Twitter, but today, I figured I could go over my level 80 OP-10 build for Gage the Necromancer. Now, it is worth noting that there are a number of different ways you can put together a Gage build, and for our purposes, we'll mainly be focusing on a solo Anarchy style build for this video, as opposed to either a Death Trap or Damage Over Time type build. And like my previous build videos, we will be going over Gage's skill tree fairly in depth, and we'll also be going over some gear recommendations as well. So if you're looking for the right skill point allocations, or you're looking for specific gear to use on Gage, this video can also help you out. Also, and as one final thing before we start, definitely be sure to smash like on this video if you know what Gage's favorite color is, and failing that, just smash like on this video if Gage is your favorite character. But enough intro, we've got quite a bit to go over here, so let's get started going over Gage's skill tree, and then we'll work our way from there. As we've seen with other characters so far, Gage has three subtrees, which are Best Friends Forever, Little Big Trouble, and Ordered Chaos. Generally speaking, Best Friends Forever is described as a good utility and death trap ability subtree, Little Big Trouble tends to be more shock and elementally focused, while Ordered Chaos is the dedicated anarchy tree which revolves around accruing anarchy stacks to improve your damage at the expense of accuracy. In my experience, Best Friends Forever has the most high quality skills within Gage's skill tree overall, and how you spec here is mostly going to depend on what gear you want to use. That said, we are going to go over the subtree, and starting with Tier 1, we have both Close Enough and Cooking Up Trouble. Both of these are great skills, with Close Enough compensating for any accuracy loss you may experience, while Cooking Up Trouble is nice for the passive health regen. I usually pick up both of these in my builds, and I'd recommend you do the same. Moving on to Tier 2, we have Fancy Mathematics, Buck Up, and The Better Half. Like our skills for Tier 1, I'd say the better half is a skill you can't really go wrong with specking for since it can help improve your DPS. However, our other two skills in this tree are shield related, and I'd recommend you spec for either one or the other, and not both. Fancy Mathematics improves your shield recharge delay and shield recharge rate based on how low your health is, while Buck Up is a death trap ability that allows death trap to restore your shield. I would just go ahead and pick between one of these two, but regardless of what you do within tier 2, at the very least, just go ahead and get the better half. This brings us to tier 3. I would avoid Boten as a pony since there are other, better ways to make you and Death Trap more durable. Plus, if you're going to put points in this tier, they're better placed in either Upshot Robot or Unstoppable Force, with the former allowing Death Trap to extend its duration when you or it get a kill, while the latter or Unstoppable Force is nice for the movement speed boost and shield regeneration. Of the two, Upshot Robot is probably a little more essential, but for Tier 3, just make sure you avoid Potent as a Pony when putting together your build. This leaves us with everything in Tier 4 and above. I'm sure no one is surprised to hear me say that all of the skills here are pretty good, though your skill point allocation will vary depending on what gear you decide to use. Explosive Clap and 20% Cooler are probably the safest bets since one is an okay Death Trap ability, while the other helps with Death Trap's insanely long cooldown. As for Made of Sterner stuff, it can be nice provided it's boosted by a class mod and is paired with the right shield, while sharing is caring is great or terrible depending on what shield you decide to use. I would say if you decide to spec for either of these latter skills, just know what gear you plan to use beforehand as you may or may not get a whole lot of use out of these otherwise. Ultimately, I feel that you're going to have the most wiggle room and potential for variation in Best Friends Forever since some skills are better or worse depending on your build. Regardless of what you do though, I would at least recommend Close Enough, Cooking Up Trouble, and The Better Half as all are great skills and require low amounts of investment within this tree. But, with Best Friends Forever out of the way, let's discuss Little Big Trouble. In some ways, Little Big Trouble is Gage's best and worst subtree. While there are great skills to be had here, there are many others that leave a whole lot to be desired, or are just straight up bugged and don't even work properly. This can really limit how you build within this tree, but nonetheless, it's worth putting some points here. 
For tier 1, you have more pep, which is a skill that improves elemental effect chance, and myelin, which is a skill that improves shield capacity and shock resistance. For my builds, I usually pick up both of these since more pep can make applying slag easier, while Mylan's shield capacity boost can be nice when using just about any shield. That and both of these are much better than the skills found within tier 2, which we should talk about right now. Aside from strength of 5 gorillas being fairly decent for death trap style builds, the stair is a bugged death trap ability that is a waste of a skill point, while shockstorm is a skill that deals ranked damage that just doesn't properly scale with higher level enemies. Since we're not focusing on a death trap build in this video, I'd recommend you avoid this tier entirely, which might be a first for this entire video series. Again, this isn't to say that every skill within this tier is trash, but two of them are, so just avoid those two. Fortunately, tier 3 is much better. I usually just stick to both Shock and Awe and Electrical Burn, since Shock and Awe is great for emitting a low damage Shock Nova, while Electrical Burn is nice because it improves your Shock damage effects by allowing a chance to also apply a Burn effect on top of them. This of course leaves us with Evil Enchantress, which can be a good skill if you put together a more damage over time focused build for Gage, but since damage over time is greatly weakened at endgame, I would just recommend you avoid this skill and stick with the other two skills within tier 3. This leaves us with the remainder of skills that are in tier 4 and up. I'd say the best of these skills is easily Wirestone Talk, since it's like having an elemental relic integrated within your skill tree. That, and when it's boosted, you can easily achieve 30-33% shock elemental bonus, which is very nice. After that, 1-2 boom sucks since it's bugged, make it sparkle is mainly geared towards death trap builds, and interspersed outburst is usually only recommended, provided you're using it with a proper class mod, as otherwise you're not guaranteed to slag the target, thus negating the point of specking for this skill. If it were me, I'd just allocate enough points within Little Big Trouble to max out Wirestone Talk and then move on. You can get Interspersed Outburst if you want, but unless you're going to use the proper class mods, you're better off saving those points and putting them elsewhere. But now we arrive at our final subtree, which is Ordered Chaos. This tree revolves around Gage's Anarchy Stack mechanic and is surprisingly straightforward. After all, only 5 skill points can be allocated into tier 1 Smaller, Lighter, Faster, and Anarchy. You're not getting a choice within this tier, and since Anarchy's damage stacking potential is so powerful, you might as well invest the points and lose the magazine size from Smaller, Lighter, Faster. That way you can get the skills and higher parts of this particular subtree. This brings us to our first real choice we have to make in Tier 2, where you have Pre-Shrunk Cyberpunk, Robot Rampage, and Blood Soaked Shields. It should go without saying, but more Anarchy Stacks is always amazing, and thus, investing in Pre-Shrunk Cyberpunk is a good idea. Blood Soaked Shields is also a good skill to invest in, since it can fully restore your shields at 5 out of 5 upon scoring a kill. As for Robot Rampage, it's a good skill for death trap builds, however it's less useful for our purposes, so I generally recommend you skip it and simply spec for Pre-Shrunk Cyberpunk and Blood Soaked Shields instead. For Tier 3, we also have some great skills here too. Discord is arguably essential for any Anarchy build since it improves your accuracy and allows health regen upon manually reloading. Plus, it's good insurance against accidental reloads, which would normally cause you to lose all of your anarchy stacks. As for our other two skills, Typecast Iconoclast will allow you to gain stacks faster, so it's recommended while Annoyed Android appears to be useful, but could really be skipped. After all, improving Death Trap's movement speed can only really do so much, and I think you can better use whatever points you would put here elsewhere. So, for Tier 3, just stick to Discord and Typecast Iconoclast. And finally, we have Tiers 4 through 6. Rational Anarchist is like Typecast Iconoclast in that it makes gaining Anarchy stacks easier. After all, starting with 25 is a lot better than starting with 1 or 2. There's also the Nth Degree, which is a skill that allows one out of a number of bullets you fire to ricochet towards enemies. Now it is worth noting that this skill can get confused with close enough, but just know that it works when bullets hit enemies while close enough works when they don't. 
After that, you have Death from Above, which is a gimmicky skill that can cause you to lose anarchy stacks, while with Claws is mainly designed and meant for melee gauge builds. For that reason, I'd recommend you avoid with Claws, and of course, it would also be wise to avoid Death from Above, though I suppose you can experiment with both if you wish. In the end though, I'd say just like Little Big Trouble, your skill point allocation here is fairly straightforward for Ordered Chaos. Just avoid some of the death trap and melee oriented skills here and you should be good. Now that you have a good understanding of the skill tree and what skills I would recommend, it's about time we discuss the build. Unlike other builds for other characters, I've decided to put something together that's more modular and with that in mind, we'll discuss how I would recommend you build Little Big Trouble and Ordered Chaos first. As you can see, this skill tree is not fully allocated. The reason for this is because the best friends forever tree can offer a lot of variation depending on what gear you use, while Little Big Trouble and Ordered Chaos are a little more straightforward. Starting with Little Big Trouble, the idea here is to pick up Wirestone Talk so we can get the most out of our shock elemental weapons. As for how we got here, more Pep and Mylan from Tier 1 makes sense since everything in Tier 2 is just bad. For tier 3, specking here is going to give us shock and awe, and then after that you can use the remaining 4 skill points anywhere else in the tree, though I will note I decided to go with electrical burn since the additional burn effect can help improve our healing with moxie weapons. As for ordered chaos, we've essentially specced for everything here with the exception of robot rampage, annoyed android, death from above, and with claws. The first two we've avoided make sense since we're not using Death Trap offensively, and as for Death from Above and with Claws, like I said earlier, Death from Above is bad since it can cause us to unintentionally drain stacks, while with Claws is for melee builds, which is again, not the type of build we're going for. As for what we've specced for, Blood Soaked Shields is good for shield restoration, the Nth Degree is nice for its ricochet potential, Discord is great for regulating anarchy stacks, and Pre-Shrunk Cyberpunk, Rational Anarchist, and Typecast Iconoclast are all good skills for gaining anarchy stacks. Thus, you will want to spec for all of them. In general, and at level 80, this is what I would do for both subtrees. This should leave you with about 28 skill points to allocate into Best Friends Forever, and since what you can do for Best Friends Forever can greatly vary, we'll go over some variations and why you might want to use them. Starting with what I prefer to do, I like to build Best Friends Forever this way. The main reason for this is so I can avoid fancy mathematics and save the 4 or so points that could be placed there and put them into Unstoppable Force for the movement speed boost. This forces you to get Buck up, which can be a problem in co-op, but since you're playing solo, you may find it's not really that much of a problem. Alternatively, and if you decided you really wanted fancy mathematics, you could do something more like this. You're dropping Buck Up and Unstoppable Force to do this, however as a result, you have one point left over. I just went ahead and put this point in Sharing is Caring since it can be a great skill depending on what shield you use, though you could feasibly place that point anywhere else in the entire skill tree. Just avoid buck up and some of the terrible death trap abilities in Little Big Trouble. There's also a third potential option if you want the Made of Sterner Stuff skill. The way I do it is to drop Fancy Mathematics for buck up to free up some skill points, and then I drop Explosive Clap to ensure both Made of Sterner Stuff and Sharing is Caring are maxed out. This is something you'll want to do if you have a class mod that boosts made of sterner stuff, since its effect can stack well provided you pair the skill with certain shields like the blockade, which have good inherent damage resistance. So if you really want made of sterner stuff, then this is how I would spec to get it. Otherwise though, do feel free to experiment beyond some of the specs I've presented here. However, I would at least recommend you get close enough, cooking up trouble, the better half, upshot robot, and 20% cooler, since all of these skills will work well with an anarchy build. Ultimately, putting together a build for Gage is largely dependent on what gear you plan on using. After all, maybe you'll want made of sterner stuff for your build if you plan on using a shield with damage resistance, or maybe you'll want fancy mathematics since it gets a boost from the class mod you're using. Speaking of class mods, that's where we'll start when it comes to our discussion about gear. 
Generally speaking, the best class mods for Gage are either the Necromancer or Legendary Anarchist, since the former is good for DPS, provided you can get a Chaotic Good variant, with skill boosts primarily to Wirestone Talk to really up your damage with Shock Weapons. As for the Legendary Anarchist, I like it since it boosts Typecast Iconoclast, which is good for stacking Anarchy, and some of the additional boosts to Unstoppable Force and Mylan are also nice. After that, some other good options are the Slayer of Terramorphous, the Jill of All Trades, the Prodigy Com, a Legendary Mechromancer class mod, and of course, you might want a Zapper Com as well. For shields, I would recommend either the Sham, the Beast Shield, or the Blockade. The Sham should go well with E-Tech Launchers and Anarchy. The Beast Shield can be surprisingly effective when paired with Blood Soaked Shields, and the Blockade is good when paired with a Necromancer class mod or really any class mod that boosts Made of Sterner Stuff. It's also worth noting that the Antagonist can also go well with Made of Sterner Stuff, so that is an alternative if you find you don't want to use or farm for a Blockade. Obviously, feel free to experiment, but whatever you do, just try to avoid roid shields because you're not going to get quite as much use out of them. This brings us to the subject of grenades. If you ask me, you could go one of two ways here. The first is the more traditional routes where you use something like a magic missile, O negative, or a bouncing Betty as a method to slag enemies. The other way you can go is to use a shock grenade, which will get buffed by our investment in Wirestone Talk and will benefit slightly from skills like more pep and electrical burn. If you go the shock grenade route, I'd recommend either the chain lightning, stormfront, or electric chair as all three will work great for that purpose. As for relics, it's really the usual suspects. If you don't know, go ahead and use the Bone of the Ancients for elemental weapons, use a Heart of the Ancients for non-elemental weapons, and use an Explosive Elemental Relic for explosive weapons. After that, you can use just about whatever you want if you're going for more defense, but I think the best defense is a good offense, so I would just go with these three relics. And now we arrive at our final set of gear recommendations, which is going to be for weapons. I'll just list off a bunch of great choices here in a moment, but in general, anything that's shock elemental, has some ricochet potential, has a huge blast radius, has homing projectiles, or has a fixed projectile pattern is usually a fantastic choice for gauge. With that in mind, I'd recommend the Twister, the Hail, the Omen, the Thunderball Fists, the Grog Nozzle, the Ricochet Fibber, the Seeker, the Hive, the Topnia, and the Norfleet. These are just a few great weapons for Gage, and there are definitely more out there, so again, just look for Shock Elemental, some Ricochet Potential, a Big Blast Radius or Homing Projectiles, and a Fixed Projectile Pattern, as these tend to work best. At the end of the day, guys, I think that's going to wrap up this final build video for Gage. If you enjoyed this video or if it helped you out, definitely be sure to smash like, Click the bell so you can be notified when I upload more Borderlands videos. And as always, and again, thank you all so much for supporting this channel. Take care, and I'll see you all in the next one.